There's just something so beautiful about the world around us, from the warm sun to the cool sea breeze. God continues to shower us in his love. As we reach the end of our liturgy, we call to mind the many ways God has blessed us with his presence. I'm Father Kevin, and this is the Kurban Explained. The last part of the Qurbana is a rite of conclusion in which we give thanks to God for the spiritual blessings that we have received through the celebration of the Qurbana. The rite of conclusion begins with the Tesbuhta, a prayer of praise and thanksgiving prayed by the congregation for the mysteries we have received. We respond in gratitude for this great and holy gift, a foretaste of heaven itself. After the Thesbota, the server invites the people to give thanks to God for making us worthy to approach the altar and to take part in the mysteries. The congregation responds, thanking God for the ineffable gift of the Holy Qurbana. The word ineffable means too great to be described in words. A reminder for us that the gift of the Qurbana is beyond all description. Then the sovereign prays the Thanksgiving prayers according to the liturgical season. You know, I was wondering, why are there different prayers throughout the different times of the year? I mean, can't the Qurbana be consistent throughout? I have thought about that, but honestly, I just think they like making us flip through the book just to confuse us. What? No. We have different prayers for the different liturgical seasons. These seasons are how we walk with Christ through his life, from his birth to his passion, death, and resurrection, all the way to his second coming. Huh, that is beautiful. That makes so much more sense. The final blessing of the Qurbana is a hutama, or the prayer of sealing. This prayer is a symbol of the blessing the Lord gave to his disciples at the time of his ascension into heaven. And after blessing the congregation, the Selbrum prays the last prayer, the farewell to the altar, in a low voice as he approaches the altar. In this prayer, the Selbrum prays that the Qurbana may pardon offenses and forgive sins, as he is reminded of his own mortality and does not know if he will come again to offer another sacrifice. In the Acts of the Apostles, Jesus tells his disciples, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This commission is what brought Christianity to India through St. Thomas the Apostle, our father in faith. And just as St. Thomas received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we too receive the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. The Hutama and the farewell prayer remind us that we are called to witness the gospel to the ends of the earth. Wait, I have one more question. Why do we even say amen? Um, I think amen's a Hebrew word, but I'm not entirely sure. No, Gio's right. It is a Hebrew word. It expresses our recognition and consent. It voices our agreement with the prayers being said. Oh, is that what we say amen after like every single prayer? Exactly. It literally translates to certainly let it be so. Certainly let it be so. I said that so many times without knowing what it means. Dude, me too. It symbolizes our agreement with the faith. It should be said consciously in oneness with the church. Amen to that. Wait, where are we going? As children of God, sealed with the Holy Spirit and have been fed with the heavenly food, we return to our normal everyday lives infused with the graces of the Holy Qurbana. In receiving the Eucharist, we are transformed anew. May the Holy Qurbana that we have received be unto us for the forgiveness of our debts, the remission of our sins. I'm Father Kevin, and this has been the Qurbana Explained.